Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and all major podcast providers. So if you can't catch the show live, you can download it or simply use our free podcast player, which is available on our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you'd like to connect with us, please post a question on our wall on Facebook or send me a tweet at June Stoyer on Twitter. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by Austria's finest naturally authentic pumpkin seeds and pumpkin seed oil from the Steiermark, available at organicuniverse.com. Listeners of The Organic View can receive $1 off their purchase by using the coupon code ORGVIEW. That's O-R-G-V-I-E-W. Also, don't forget to check out our contest section on our website to submit your information for our free monthly giveaways. For more information, please visit our website at www.theorganicview.com forward slash contests. On today's show, the Honorable Mary Nash Stoddard will be joining me to talk about the many faces of aspartame. And we will also discuss some of the foods you would never expect to find aspartame in. So I'd like to welcome to the show, Mary Nash Stoddard. So nice to have you back. Hi, June. It's great to be with you today. How are you doing? (laughs) I am fabulous. Thank you for asking, Mary. You are such an amazing person to talk to, and you are the first person that I always think about whenever I listen to people talk about different food products, especially when it comes to low-calorie type products and beverages especially. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have you on today, and I know that there are a lot of people who still don't know the dangers of aspartame. So perhaps you could take us back in time a little bit and talk about yourself and how you got started on this whole journey with aspartame advocacy. Thank you. I'm co-founder of the original Aspartame Consumer Safety Network in 1987, following the brain tumor death of my 42-year-old husband. And before that, June, I served a full term as an appointed judge for the state of Texas. After that, I testified and did PR for the third Senate hearing on aspartame safety in November of 1987. Boy, do we go back. I mean, this is almost 30 years ago. Um, I edited the first syllabus synopsis on aspartame called Deadly Deception, Story of Aspartame. Um, received official official awards from the government of Mexico for investigating this artificial sweetener and was their keynote speaker in 98 at their uh, annual conference on sweeteners. So I've been doing a lot since then, and um, I, I still get calls on the aspartame hotline from pilots and and consumers, mothers who are concerned about their kids. So I I love doing what I do and don't get paid for any of it, but it's worth it to me to know that we're saving lives. And thank you so much for, for having me on today to talk about this. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm hoping that listeners that are just learning about the dangers of aspartame will be able to understand a lot of the work that you do as well as what the problem is from consuming this chemical. So can you give a little bit of history about aspartame? When exactly did it first hit the market? Okay, before it hit the market the first time, it was approved in the 1970s as an official uh, sweetener by the FDA. But it didn't get on the market because they they didn't retest, but they looked at the tests again and saw all these statistics showing it caused brain tumors. The diketopiperazine in it, uh, the DKP, caused brain tumors in the lab animals in the test. And these were falsified. So when the FDA director changed in 1981... Then they went again, this G.D. Searle company headed by Donald Rumsfeld applied one more time through the new FDA director who we believe was put into place 
just to see that aspartame got approved because everybody on the FDA board was against approval and the FDA director did the tie vote that broke the tie and allowed it to go on the market. So it was, uh, we say, illegally on the market because felonies had been committed, lab tests, uh, lab animals were brought back to life on paper that had died in the actual testing. We call it the case of the resurrected rats. I mean, it was, it would be funny if it weren't so deadly serious. So on the market, uh, in dry form, in the form of equal, the tabletop sweetener, it was in 1982. So that was in iced tea mix, uh, international coffee mixes, you know, like uh, Swiss Miss and, and those things, sugar-free. And as equal to uh, sweeten things, teas and coffees, then in 1983, it was approved as uh, aqua, for aqueous solution, which means it can be in beverages, and that's when it was in diet drinks. I got my first diet drink with aspartame in it in 1984 in December, and I complained because I was used to drinking the diet drinks with saccharin in them, and I, I liked them. I was used to it. So I complained uh, to the nurse at the nurse's station. My husband was taking cancer treatments in in the cancer hospital here. And um, she said, well, I'll ask the the, uh, distributor. And she said, get used to it. The distributor says aspartame is the sweetener in all the drinks now. And so... About two weeks later, my husband died from his brain tumor, and I kept on drinking diet soda with aspartame in it. I didn't like it, but I thought it was my my line to losing weight and staying fit. So then I joined Weight Watchers, used all the stuff they recommended. I cooked with Equal. I baked with it. I thought this was a free pass to no calories, no weight gain, in fact, losing weight, which I didn't really do. So that's my experience, and that's when it came on the market. And ever since the years uh, in the mid-'80s, the statistics have been rising for brain tumors and for all these other five cancers aspartame caused in the lab test, breast cancer, uh, liver liver cancer, uterine cancer, and uh, others, brain tumors. Um, So now we know it causes all those, plus leukemia and lymphoma in all the latest studies, and kidney cancer. So it's, it's really horrible stuff, and nobody really with the government is taking responsibility for it. Well, apparently not, because if you go to the FDA's website, Mm -hmm. and there is actually a document, and this document, will the actual link will be available in the companion article to this interview. But if you go to the FDA's website, Mm -hmm. let's see, it says Part 172, Food Additives Permitted for Direct Addition to Food for Human Consumption. Mm Mm-hmm. Apparently, it is perfectly fine, according to the FDA. And it says, the food additive aspartame may be safely used in food accordance with good manufacturing practice as a sweetening agent and a flavor enhancer in foods for which standards of identity established under Section 401 of the Act do not preclude such use under the following conditions. And it lists a whole bunch of different conditions. This has, let's see, there are about, I'd say, 10 or so conditions. If you jump down to C, it says, when aspartame is used as a sugar substitute tablet for sweetening hot beverages, including coffee and tea, L-leucine may be used as a lubricant in the manufacture of such tablets at a level not to exceed 3.5% of the weight of the tablet. Mm -hmm. Mary, could you explain that to us lay people? 
Well, I don't, I'm not familiar with the L-leucine part of that, but I do know that since they changed the uh, labeling to not have it be on the label for, in the case of neotame, for PKUs, then under federal law, it doesn't have to be labeled. Uh, that's a problem. If it's less than 5% of the weight of all the overall ingredients weight table, then it doesn't have to be on the label. So I think the key word you mentioned a while ago was uh, something about natural flavoring or... Flavor enhancer. Okay, that flavor is, enhancer. Bingo. Exactly. Bingo. Yeah, the and, flavor enhancer, that is basically the counterpart to sweetening agent. Yes. Because you figure, okay, if they're going to use an artificial sweetener, right. it's supposed to take the place of a real a real form of sugar. That's right. Or naturally occurring form of sugar. And this, as a flavor enhancer... Right. They can basically add it to anything, and it's perfectly legal, according to the FDA. They can, and they do. And I'm wondering if some of the products out there that are making people sick now, like Bluebell ice cream, the vanilla, uh, if if it might have something to do with uh, an aspartame-type sweetener being added um, in the artificial flavoring or the na- what they call so-called natural flavorings. Now, when submitted to the USDA for organic certification, uh, some of the companies have, have gone under the radar with the labeling laws, and they have said that that information is proprietary, what's in their natural flavor and their artificial flavor, so that they can legally use the term natural flavor, artificial flavor, or colors, coloring added, and not divulge what that really means. What proprietary. Yeah, it's proprietary. You will never know. Oh, no, you won't. And they allow that to happen and one of the reasons may possibly be because if it's less than five percent of the weight let's say of all the ingredients they have been told by the neotame manufacturers and the NutraSweet and aspartame manufacturers that that's no big deal you know what's five percent well a micro dot of LSD can send people into a hallucinatory uh, effect and and, uh, hallucinations. So um, a micro dot of a a bad enough toxin, and remember, June, neotame is 30,000 times sweeter than sugar, 30,000 times. Aspartame is only two or 300 times sweeter. Um, And so... They're they're trying to sort of lull us into a false sense of security by saying, oh, your kids aren't getting much toxic material in their vitamins, in their treats, in their ice cream and um, medications, you know, prescription and over-the-counter, as we've talked about in other interviews. Uh, you know, what's... Five percent of of the ingredients. Well, it's significant to people like me who are highly sensitive to it. For one thing, it's also significant to understand that on a routine basis, if this is given every single day, and a child ingests it, or an elderly person, or uh, somebody whose immune system is compromised, you know that is a big deal. And I I don't even think they care. I mean, we're expendable. The PKU kids are expendable in the FDA's eyes. They really don't care whether we live or die. Well, apparently not, because the next link that I would like to refer to Mm -hmm. lists all of the different names. And this particular 
article can be found on the FDA.gov's website, and it's titled Additional Information About High-Intensity Sweeteners Permitted for Use in Food in the United States. And this is found if you go to home, then food, then ingredients, packaging, and labeling. It's under food additives and ingredients. Mm -hmm. And it says high-intensity sweeteners are commonly used as sugar substitutes or sugar alternatives because they are many times sweeter Mm -hmm. than sugar but contribute only to a few to no calories when added to food. There you go. High-intensity sweeteners, like all other ingredients, added to foods in the United States must be safe for consumption. So isn't that contradictory? Oh. It's, it must be safe for consumption. I'm talking to you, Mary Nash Stoddard, the expert on aspartame, and yet I'm reading on the FDA.gov's website, yeah. this is safe for humans' consumption. Meanwhile, when you take a look at this, yes. who, who are they working for? Are they yes. working for the manufacturers? Or are they yes. looking to protect the people? <laughs> Bottom line. Absolutely. So they list the following, saccharin, aspartame, Ace sulfame potassium, did I pronounce that correctly? It's a salt, potassium salt, ace sulfame K. Yeah, that's not aspartame. Ace sulfame potassium ace K. Right. Sucralose, neotame, advantame, stevial glycoside. Yeah, those are uh, advantame and neotame are both aspartame products. And then this last one, I don't know if this is the proper pronunciation, but Luhan Guao fruit extracts. As far as I know, Luhan has nothing to do with aspartame. But there are studies out there, June, of course you know, that say all artificially sweetened things are not, I mean, they're counterproductive to a weight loss program and a health and fitness program because they heighten our taste for sweetness. And that's what it's all about. You know, when something's 30,000 times sweeter than a a piece of fruit or a banana or a spoonful of sugar, that should be a red flag in every parent's mind, in every person, every thinking person's mind who looks at an ingredient label and says, wow, wow. You know, this is, there's something wrong here. Too many ingredients. I can't pronounce all the ingredients. Uh, some of them even fluster people who are experts like you and, and others. And so, I mean, if we don't know what all those things are and what they mean, why are we putting them into our bodies? Good question. Now, I just want to clarify something. This last ingredient Mm -hmm. is also known as monk fruit, which they should have just stated that. Yeah. And that is a plant native to southern China. So uh, that's quite interesting. It also says FDA has received grass notifications for this particular fruit extract, otherwise known as SGFE. Yeah. And it contained varying levels of magricides. Is that also, a lot of words here that I can't pronounce. This is <laughs> I'm kind not of frustrating sure I, for me. I'm not sure I know that one. Uh, monosaccharides, probably. I, I'm no, not this, reading this it. Is, I'm not looking this is at it. M O G R O S I D E S, which are the non nutritive constituents of the fruit primarily responsible for the characteristics sweetness of SGFE. Okay. And then it says SGFE, depending on the magricide content is reported to be 100 to 250 times sweeter than sugar. Very interesting. That's a red flag. Yeah, that is actually listed at the bottom of that, the the, sec, the, the um, article that I just mentioned. If you scroll down, it's a lot of information. Yeah, it is. But they list all of the information here. It says the type of sweetener, towards the bottom it says sweetener, regulatory status, Examples of brand names containing sweetener, mm-hmm. multiplier of sweetness intensity compared to table sugar, yeah. and then it says acceptable daily intake, milligrams per kilogram, body weight per day, number of packets equivalent to ADI, which is the acceptable, acceptable daily intake. Now, that's quite interesting because if you think about somebody who consumes, say, I don't know, uh, several cans or bottles of Diet Coke. Right. It's it, it's it's almost like they're overdosing. Oh, absolutely. And June, what people don't realize is Diet Coke, or let's just say Diet Soda, 
uh, has 200, approximately 200 milligrams of aspartame per can of diet soda. That translates into 20 milligrams of pure methanol. 10% of the aspartame molecule is methanol. So that if you drink, say, three cans of diet soda a day, which is pretty normal in today's world, you are drinking 60 grams uh, of methanol, 60 mgs of methanol per uh, can, uh, three cans. So <laughs> I'm getting mixed up with my figures here, but anyway, it's 200 in a can of aspartame and 20% of that is methanol. Well, it's just interesting when you take a look at the finer points in this little chart that they have here. Yes. Yeah. With ACE K, uh -huh. so it says approved as a sweetener and flavor enhancer. Remember that term, folks, flavor enhancer. Yes. In food generally. And then it says, Parentheses, except in meat and poultry. All right, Mary, why are they trying to sweeten meat and poultry? I don't eat meat to begin with. Right. I, even, if, even if I wanted to eat meat, I wouldn't touch it knowing what I know about agriculture. Sure. Just, that's a whole other show's subject. Yes. But getting back to this. Okay. Uh, we, why would that? Why would that even be part of, or, or, or on? Why would that even be listed? Well, What's going on there? For one thing, uh, I discovered about three years ago that there is they're putting uh, a brand called Sweetos, which is neotame, into cattle feed now in place of molasses. Molasses prices went up, so they can't afford to do that as economically as they can buy neotame and feed the cows. And they say, oh, well, it doesn't get into the milk or the meat or anything else uh, that the cows have. That is so much BS, if you don't mind. <laughs> the it's true. It's yeah. very true. I could tell you that as someone who grew up on a farm, yeah. whatever your animals are eating is definitely going to come out in, well, if you're going to consume that animal. Yes, of course. And it just, it makes me angry because it makes me understand that they think we're stupid and that we believe that anything they tell us it's okay because they have initials after their name or they have scientists in front of their name or they have this or that or they have FDA government approval. You know, we got to be our own FDA. You've got to do, if, if you can't do the research yourself, um, let somebody like me do it and, and please ask me if you have a question, uh, not by phone but by email, that's what we're here for, to help people. And it is confusing. You're absolutely right. I love these Mary, sites that you've mentioned. And the, well, you could thank the FDA. This is taxpayers' yeah. dollars hard at work. Yeah. Now, Mary, my next question is Neotame. Yes. They have it listed as Newtame. That's a new one. Wow. Newtame. Well, Neo, it means new. Uh, but I I hadn't realized they had actually changed the name, but yeah. it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, I, my eyes glaze over almost when I see all the names that it goes by now, and, and that's because they want to confuse us. They're all about confusing the consuming public because, if we really knew what we were doing to ourselves when we ate and drank and chewed their substance, uh, we'd reject it. And people were rejecting aspartame in the marketplace, and diet soda sales are way, way, way down. So they are coming back in, you know, in other ways that they think we won't be able to see through. And some of us don't, but thank goodness people are, are wising up and getting more savvy about their food choices. Um, I still think we have a long way to go because, let me tell you, I've been seeing a number of people that I know that are drinking Diet Coke or they'll buy it for the guests. 
Right. Not just Diet Coke, but diet beverages. Right. Well, everybody wants to look like Madonna, and she's the the poster child for Diet Coke. I mean, she talks about it every chance she gets, how much she uses it. And when you got celebrities out there like that and Taylor Swift being the spokesperson. Like they really drink it. Like they're, they they pay top dollar for their personal trainers. They have a private chef. Right, they have right. so many things. Like they really drink this. I sincerely doubt that. I, I have, have no idea. Uh, we do know who did drink it, apparently, and that's the FDA director who approved it who died in 2010 from one of the cancers aspartame causes, and that is leukemia. Uh, and he he said it, there was nothing wrong with it. It was safe and, and good to use, and so his family used it. Apparently they did, including his daughter, who died the same year as her father. That's awful. About six months later. Uh, from pancreatic cancer and aspartame cancer. And if I'm not mistaken, she was the uh, artificial sweetener representative for Europe uh, in Brussels, and she promoted it. So you know those two people didn't have a clue. They, they, they believed the, the hype, apparently. Where are the lawyers? Where are the lawyers with all the class class action lawsuits? That's what I want to know. Well, for one thing, if you bring a lawsuit against the company and you lose, then you've got to pay all the court costs and uh, everything for doing it. Not only that, but they can turn around and sue you for libel and, you know, who knows what. Uh, class action suits really don't fly. They're always settled out of court and have to be um, I, would, secret. I would think that would be the case, yeah, because let me tell you something. If somebody can sue, who is it, McDonald's for hot coffee spilling right. in their car, whatever the case may be, right. that, well, that really just was uh, ridiculous. But if case in point, if somebody can sue for that, I, I would think that the number of lawsuits would be tremendous, that's, especially with these products. Yeah, uh, but tort reform happened after that McDonald's case. Uh, George W. Bush uh, says one of his best accomplishments is tort reform, where people can't sue manufacturers and get away with it. You know, and they put a cap on the amount of pain and suffering and money that can be awarded. Now, granted, that hot coffee suit was was frivolous and ridiculous and shouldn't have even gotten to court. But there are cases out there of people who've died from it who deserve to uh, be, you know, their heirs, uh, deserve to sue over the wrongful death of their relative or loved one. Uh, in the first cases against the cigarette companies, they they were won for those reasons. But with tort reform, it's pretty difficult, and it's very intimidating to think about going up against some of the biggest, baddest law firms in the country uh, to do a lawsuit. I've given depositions to the NutraSuite uh, law firm in Washington, and I know what they're like. Mary, we're running out of time, but before we end, could you just share with our listeners some advice as far as different products that they should avoid, especially if they have issues with consuming too much sugar yeah. or if they need to avoid natural sugar? What do you? What advice do you have for them? Well, I... First of all, I would maybe not avoid, in a blanket way, all sugar-free and fat-free uh, labels. But it's a red flag to me. If it says sugar-free, it's usually not a good thing. If it says fat-free, it usually has artificial sweeteners in it. Um, if it says PKU contains phenylalanine, that is aspartame. Don't buy it. 
there are so many things that contain it, in, including medications, prescription, and over-the-counter meds for allergies, for antibiotics, for the flu, uh, all kinds of medications that you wouldn't think have it do. And so also chewing gum, which that's not always on the label. Often aspartame is combined with sugar even. So I would say stick with the safe stuff, stick with honey, maple syrup, pure 100% maple syrup, organic. Um, and stevia is a perfectly fine alternative sweetener. I'm not too sure about agave. Um, there are some troubling things that have come out about that sweetener a little bit. Um, also, just rethink artificial anything, but especially sweeteners, because that means hundreds and thousands of times sweeter than fruit, which was, was given to us to eat in the first place for our sweet taste. So get back to nature, get back to fruit, and organically grown is uh, really healthy. So, you know, if, if it has so many names on the label of things you can't pronounce, put it back. Shop around the periphery of your supermarket. Go to farmer's markets. Uh, patronize Thanks. the people who are doing good stuff for our food supply. Exactly. Mary, thank you so much for being on the show today. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, June. Really appreciate and, it. Oh, my pleasure. And folks, check out the companion article, which will be available on theorganicview.com. And also check out our contest section, in which each month we're giving away different prizes. And all the information is available at theorganicview.com forward slash contest. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone.